Hi learners! Welcome to Math is Fun with Sir O. Today, I will be discussing Statistics. The measures of dispersion is the second subtopic under our lesson on statistics. Today's lesson, we're going to discuss the measures of dispersion for the ungrouped data. So before we go to our lesson, let's read first our learning outcomes. At the end of this lesson, the learners will be able to first familiarize the definitions of range, variance, and standard deviation, and compute and interpret the measures of dispersion for the ungrouped data. Would there be any question with our learning outcomes? Now let's go to our measures of dispersion for the ungrouped data. So we're going to discuss the range variance, and standard deviation. A measure of variability of a set of data is a number that conveys the idea of spread for the data set. The following are the measures of dispersion. First, range. Second, variance. And third, standard deviation. Now let's start with the range. The range measures the distance between the largest and the smallest values and such gives an idea of the spread of the data set. However, the range does not use the concept of deviation. It is affected by outliers, but does not consider all values in the data set. Thus, it is not a very useful measure of variability. So to solve for our range, we have this formula. That is equals to the difference of the highest value and the lowest value. Meaning, we're going to subtract the lowest value on your data set from the highest value. So let's have an example. Find the range of the numbers of ounces dispensed by machine one and machine two. Now we have here our table. So let's say that machine one and machine two are soda dispensers. In machine one, we have here five values of ounces dispensed by machine one. In machine one, we have your 9.52 ounces, 6.41 ounces, 10.07 ounces, 5.85 ounces, and 8.15 ounces. Now, if you're going to get the average value of the soda dispensed by machine one, that would be mu is equal to 8.0, meaning that is the average amount in ounces dispensed by machine one. Now let's compare our machine two. So we have here 8.01 ounces, 7.99 ounces, 7.95 ounces, 8.03 ounces, and 8.02 ounces. Same with machine one, we have also the same amount dispensed soda in ounces by our machine two. Now, if we're going to solve for the range of the two machines, then we're going to subtract the lowest value from the highest value. For machine one, we have the highest value is 10.07. Then we're going to subtract the lowest value, which is 5.85. And so the range for machine one is 4.22 ounces. For machine two, the highest value is 8.03 ounces, then we're going to subtract the lowest value, which is 7.95 ounces. And so the range for machine two is 0.08 ounces. Now, if we're going to compare the two machines, so which one performs better? Very good. So it is the machine two that performs better. As you can see that the values in machine two are not really that dispersed compared to machine one. Now let's go to variance. The variance for a given set of data set is the square of the standard deviation of the data. So meaning our variance is just the square of our standard deviation and our standard deviation is the square root of our variance. We're so going to have only one formula in order for us to solve for the variance and the standard deviation. The formula that we use for variance of the population is sigma squared. That is equal to 
the summation of the square of your x value and your mean. So your mu here refers to the mean of your data set. Then we're going to divide everything by your n. So your n there will be the number of your elements in your data set. Now for the variance formula of the sample. So we have s squared is equal to the summation of the square of your x value and your mu or mean all over n minus 1. Now if you're going to notice that our numerators are both the same, but then we have different denominators. So for sample, we are using n minus 1. Now let's go to the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measure of how spread out numbers are. Its symbol is the Greek letter sigma. So this is the symbol for our sigma. So the standard deviation of the population is sigma is equal to the square root of the summation of the square of the difference of x and mu all over your n. The standard deviation formula of the sample is represented by our s, and that is equal to the square root of the summation of the square of your x minus mu all over n minus 1. Now let's go to the steps on how we compute the standard deviation. First, we're going to determine the mean of the n numbers. Second, for each number, calculate the deviation. That is the difference between the number and the mean of the numbers. Third, calculate the square of each deviation and find the sum of these squared deviations. Fourth, if the data is a population, then divide the sum by n. If the data is a sample, then divide the sum by n minus 1. And lastly, find the square root of the quotient in step 4 to get the standard deviation. Now let's have an example so that we could be able to follow these steps or procedure. The following numbers were obtained by sampling a population 2, 4, 7, 12, 15. Find the variance and the standard deviation. Now, the question is, is our data set 2, 4, 7, 12, 15 a sample or a population? That's right. It is a sample. Why? Because of the word sampling a population. So meaning the denominator for our formula should be n minus 1. So let's go to our solution. First, determine the mean of the n numbers. So we're going to use this formula. That is the formula for the mean. So bar x is equal to the summation of your x values all over your n. So we have bar x is equal to 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 12 plus 15 all over 5. Then let's simplify. So that would be equal to 40 divided by 5. And our mean is equal to 8. Or that is also represented by our mu. Okay, so our mu is 8. Now let's go to the second step. Calculate the deviation between the numbers and the mean of the numbers. Now we have here our values of the x. So we have 2, 4, 7, 12, and 15. And we know already our mean represented by our mu, which is equal to 8. And our n is equal to 5. Now, the formula that we're going to use is this. So s squared is equal to the summation of the square of the difference of your x value and your mean. And all over n minus 1. Meaning we're going to divide everything by n minus 1. So this time, we're going to substitute all the values there in our formula. So we have s squared is equal to 2 minus 8. So this is the deviation that we are talking about, right? Squared plus 4 minus 8. This is also another deviation. Then you're going to square plus 7 minus 8 squared plus 12 minus 8 squared plus 15 minus 8 squared all over 
5 minus 1. Because our n there is 5, but then we're going to use this denominator minus 1. So our n is 5 minus 1, so that would be 5 minus 1. Now let's simplify. So we have your s squared, so that's 2 minus 8 will give us negative 6 squared. Plus 4 minus 8 is equal to negative 4, then squared. Plus 7 minus 8 is equal to negative 1, then squared. Plus 12 minus 8 is equal to 4, squared. Plus 15 minus 8 is equal to 7, squared. All over 5 minus 1. Now we're going to calculate the square of each deviation and we're going to find the sum of the squared deviation. So that would be negative 6 squared is equal to 36 plus negative 4 squared is equal to 16 plus negative 1 squared is equal to 1 plus 4 squared is equal to 16 plus 7 squared is equal to 49. Then we're going to divide them by 5 minus 1. Now step number 4. If the data is a population, then divide the sum by n. If the data is a sample, then divide the sum by n minus 1. So we had already applied n minus 1. So now let's simplify the squared deviations. So we have s squared is equal to 118 divided by 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Okay, so let's simplify further. So 118 divided by 4, that is equal to 29.5. And this is our variance because that is still our s squared, right? Now let's go to the fifth and final step. Find the square root of the quotient in step four. So that would be square root of your x squared is equal to the square root of 29.5. Then the square root of 29.5, that is equal to 5.43. So this is our standard deviation. Now, let's summarize our solution. So our variance is equal to 29.5 and our standard deviation is equal to 5.43. Now, let's go to the application of standard deviation in real life situation. So we have here a problem. A consumer group has tested eight samples of size D batteries from each of three companies. The results of the tests are shown in the following table. According to these tests, which company produces batteries for which the values representing hours of constant? So meaning, if we're going to obtain the standard deviation, which is the least, that would be the company that has a good quality of their products, which is a battery. Now we have here the three companies and their respective eight samples of their batteries. So for ever so bright, we have 6.2, 6.4, 7.1, 5.9, 8.3, 5.3, 7 5.3, 7.5, 9.3. So these are actually hours of constant use per battery. Now for dependable company, we have 6.8, 6.2, 7.2, 5.9, 7.0, 7.5, 9.3, 7.3, and 8.2. Now for Beacon Company, 6 6.1, 6.6, 7.3, 5.7, 7.1, 7.6, 7.1, and 8.5. So we're going to solve the standard deviation of each company. So let's start with the ever so bright company. So of course, the first step is we're going to get the mean of our data set. So we have bar x is equal to 6.2 plus 6.4 plus 7.1 plus 5.9 plus 8.3 plus 5.3 plus 7.5 plus 9.3 divided by 8 because we have our 8 samples. So for our mean, that would be equal to 7. Now, applying the formula for the sample because this is only a sample taken from the population of all the products in this company. So we have here our values plugged in into the formula. So that would be S is equal to the square root. Okay, so we have here the summation of the squares of our deviation all over 
7. Why 7? Because this is only a sample. We have your n, which is equal to 8, minus 1. That would be equal to 7. Right? So, let's simplify this further. And that would be the square root of 12.34 divided by 7. And our standard deviation for ever so bright is 1.33 hours. Let's take note this result. Now, let's go to the next company, dependable company. So we have 6 6.8, 6.2, 7.2, 5.9, 7.0, 7.4, 7.3, 8.2. So of course, the first step is we're going to get the mean of our data set. And that would be equal to 7. Then we're going to apply now our formula. So, so plugging in the values we have here, the square root of the summation of the squares of the deviations of the data set divided by 7. So still, we have n minus 1. That's 8 minus 1. Then our denominator there is equal to 7. So let's simplify our solution. And that would be the square root of 3.62 divided by 7. And the standard deviation of dependable company is 0.72 hour. Right, so let's take note also the standard deviation of dependable company. Now let's go to the last company, which is your beacon company. So we have there 6.1, 6 6.6, 7.3, 5.7, 7.1, 7.6, 7.1, and 8.5. So again, let's solve for the mean of our data set, and that would be also equal to 7. So using the same formula. Then we have here the square root of the summation of the squares of the deviation divided by 7. And that would be equal to the square root of 5.38 divided by 7. And the standard deviation of the beacon company is 0.88 hour. Now let's compare the three standard deviations of the company. So for ever so bright, the standard deviation is 1.33 hours. For dependable company, we have 0 0.72 hour. For beacon, we have 0 0.88 hour. So the batteries from dependable have the smallest standard deviation. So according to these results, the dependable company produces the most consistent batteries with regard to the life expectancy under constant usage. So meaning the dependable company will give us a quality product. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. Please don't forget to like and share this to your friends and your classmates. And if you have questions, just go to the comment section below. And I hope you consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Again, it's my pleasure to create and make video on your math lessons to make your learning journey a wholesome and fun activity. By the way, this is your Sir O. Till next time. God bless and keep safe always. Goodbye.